This video gives an outline on how to create a multiple etching and collagraph hand pulled print. The process begins with a blank zinc plate which has had the edges beveled and is polished starting with steel wool then on to brasso. It is polished until the surface is smooth and free of any scratches or marks. The plate is then degreased with soap and water and talcum powder. Asphaltum, a water and acid resistant ground, is then painted in a thin layer over the entire plate. I scribed the outline of my drawing onto the plate and gave it a short one minute etch. Here I'm removing the asphaltum to expose the fine lines left behind. I will use these for a guide going forward. The plate will be placed in an acid bath made up of 12 parts water to 1 part nitric acid. The acid will eat in the exposed areas of the plate and be stopped out by the areas covered with asphaltum. The open etch will give a rougher surface to the plate in those areas. This will leave a residue of ink behind when the plate is printed. Any areas of the plate that remain untouched by the acid through the process will be smooth and wipe free of ink at print time. The etched areas will print different tones depending on how deep the etch is. The plate is then put in the acid bath for a minute just to give a light etch in the open areas. There are many different grounds that can be used when etching plates and in this case I'm using a grease crayon which is basically the same as a soft grease pencil. It is also acid resistant. Each time I redraw on it I etch it for five minutes and the result will be that more ink will collect in the areas that are etched longer. Although it's not shown in this video, I've applied a spray aquatint to the plate between each dip in the acid bath. And now to work on the leaves. Again, I'm applying asphaltum to the background so that the acid won't bite in those areas. Here I'm applying grease pencil to the plate. Once again, it is acid resistant. Besides using grease pencil at this point, I also applied a spray aquatint to the plate. And a final etch on the tree branches.
Now we're ready to transfer the image to the other plates. Here's the first etch plate and the two blank holograph plates. Here the etched plate is inked up and ready to run through the press, which will be followed by the two blank holograph plates. When a blank plate is run through the press following an inked one, the ink leaves behind a ghost image. I will use these as guides throughout the rest of the process. The holograph plates are both made from matte board that have been coated with thin polymer medium to seal them from ink, solvents, and other liquids. It's important care is taken when positioning all the plates on the press to ensure proper registration throughout the printing process. The white plate shown here has also been covered with a synthetic sheer material so the ghost image doesn't transfer as well, but still enough for what I have planned. The print shown here has been stripped of some of its ink through the process, but still needs more work before the final printing. And the plates. The zinc etched plate. The first holograph plate with the ghost image. And the second holograph plate with the ghost image. And now, how I made the holograph plates. Because this is part of a multi-plate print, I start with a piece of math board cut exactly the same size as a zinc plate that I'm using. A piece of sheer material known as organdy is trimmed to size and adhered to the plate with thin polymer medium. Shown here, I'm smoothing the material with a damp sponge to stop any bubbles from forming between the material and the plate. Once dry, the next step is securing the trim material to the back of the plate. Besides working as a glue, the polymer medium seals the plate from liquids, thinners, and ink, penetrating the matte board. It also strengthens the plate, which allows more passes through the press before the plate breaks down. Transferring of the image to this plate, shown earlier, was done once it was dried fully. The ghost image left behind from the transfer is traced so it is easier to see and manipulate with the other mediums. The plate is then masked so the background can be worked on, leaving the rest of the image untouched. The sheer organdy material's open weave catches the ink when it's applied to the plate for printing. The ink gets caught in each weave and if left untouched, it will print a solid color similar to an aqua tint. Modeling paste that has been tinted with yellow acrylic paint is applied to the plate. It will fill in some of the weave, but it will still leave a residue that ink will adhere to when preparing for printing. I'm now applying more thin polymer medium to the areas of the plate that I want to hold less ink. The shiny parts of the plate will hold less and print lighter. The raw material will print a solid color. Over the years, I've been asked how long it takes to do one of my prints. That really depends on the complexity of the piece, how many plates, and the size of the addition. Some of my prints have taken several hundred hours to complete. In this case, I estimate it took between 75 and 100. Printing alone took 30 hours plus to print the proofs and the final edition of 15. Although this is time lapsed, more work is done on the plates than shown here, especially on the zinc plate. Masking begins for work on the branches. Several layers of thin polymer medium are applied to the branch areas. This allows for little or no ink to catch in the weave and will leave the print blank of color in those areas. Once again, the plate is masked and trimmed, this time to work on the leaves. The polymer medium used throughout this process is tinted blue so I'm able to see how many layers I've applied to the plate. Layers of polymer medium are painted on the plate. 
As before, each coat fills a portion of the weave in, and the more layers, the lighter the ink will print. The less coats, the darker the ink will print, and the raw material will print a solid color. There are many techniques used to make holographic plates, and this is just one of them. The plan is to print this plate a vibrant orange with the two other plates added to it. The final colors will be determined when the proofing is done. Another piece of mat board was cut exactly the same size as the first two plates and then painted several times with thin polymer medium on both sides. Once the plate was fully dry, the image was transferred as it was shown earlier in this video. The polymer medium leaves a smooth surface on the mat board and after several coats it will be smooth enough to wipe clean and free of ink at print time. Here shows peeling away that smooth top surface of the mat board to expose the rough cardboard surface underneath. Base polymer medium is useful for creating glazes, extending colors of acrylic paints and enhances gloss and translucency. It has an oil-like feel and is resinous in nature. Besides being used mixed or applied to paints, polymer medium is an excellent sealant. In this case, it seals the mat board plate from any liquids such as solvents and inks. It also toughens the plate, lengthening its print life. Once the top layer is peeled away, another thin coat of polymer medium is applied to the plate to seal it once again, and then once dry, the image is traced. This allows for the image to be seen more clearly through masking tape. plate is then masked and trimmed to allow work to be done on the background, leaving the rest of the plate untouched. Modeling paste that has been tinted yellow is applied to the plate. This will result in textured ink in those areas left on the print when it's run through the press. The plan is to print this plate a shade of green. Now we're ready to ink up and print the final print. In preparing to print, I'm inking the orange plate with oil-based ink. When carting it onto the plate, it pushes the ink into the weaves of the plate. The plate is then wiped with a starched cheesecloth known as Tarleton. The Tarleton wipes ink from the surface of the plate with the stiff material grabbing the excess ink and leaving it behind in the grooves and textures. Phone book pages are then used to wipe more of the excess ink from the surface of the plate. The edges are also cleaned before it going to press. And the wiped orange collagraph plate. The same inking process is used preparing each plate for the press. and the inked up green collagraph plate. And the inked up etched black plate. The first plate on the press is the green plate. And then on to the orange plate. and the black plate.
the final print. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's more to come.